How about that cigar? How about that cigar? Well, Garrett, it is a beautiful night here in Minnesota. It's Tuesday night, as always. And welcome, guys, to How About That Cigar Live. We are coming to you live, as always, from the Drew Estate Cigar Studios. And the Drew Estate Cigar Studios are on the road today in Tobacco Grove in Maple, Maple Grove, Grove Minnesota. Minnesota. So we want to... Uh, Thank our sponsor, Drew Estate. Let me grab that uh, right here. Drew Estate announces the launch of the 2020 Barn Smoker Program. Barn Smoker 2020 continues to expand the festival atmosphere that celebrates the love of the leaf and Drew Estate culture, envisioned and inspired by Jonathan Drew to bring aficionados, brands, and local businesses to American tobacco farms. Barn Smoker events also serve to raise awareness for Cigars for Warriors, a 501c3 charity whose sole focus is to support the American military. The 2020 Barn Smoker program creates an immersive deep dive into a variety of unique sensory deep. activations <laughs> uh, focusing on brands including Pappy Van Winkle, Hoy de Nicaragua, and more. Tickets are available now for purchase at barnsmoker.com. So, Garrett, this is exciting. Yeah, this is show 140. <laughs> oh, wait. Not quite. You're no, close. I am. 48. 48. 48. 48. Yeah. 48. But it's really exciting. We've got a lot going on. You guys can obviously hear some background noise going on behind us, but it's great because there's a great crowd of people here at Tobacco yeah. Grove. Uh, they have their Havana nights here on Tuesday after hours, and it's uh, it's a great group of people here enjoying cigars and each other's company. So, and we've got a great guest coming on in just a couple minutes here. But uh, we want to thank you guys for watching and listening. If you are watching on Facebook, take just a second and share us out to your favorite Facebook cigar groups. And if you're listening on your favorite audio podcast platform, thank you so much for listening and take just a moment, if you would please, and give us a little bit of a like and a little bit of a subscribe and a little bit of a five star rating thank you so much for that smash that like button so the twins <laughs> are i mean i know it's spring training i get it Dude. it's preseason. yeah but they are really playing well I'm, even the second team yes uh listening to the announcers yep they continuously say i don't want to oppose the twins this year right you know oppose the twins this year because they have a very scary team and it's just I don't know if this is false hope that we get fed as Minnesota sports fans, uh, but I am excited yes. for this year. Yeah, very you know, excited. I don't think it's World Series or bust. We had a great season last yep. season. Yep. I have you know, no big, huge disappointments about it. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited, man. Yeah, it's going to be a great season. And the Minnesota Wild. The Wild. I mean, we've been talking for weeks, months about how the Wild are just level 500. at 500. And we are they're playing right now, and they're doing well. Yeah. But there's six games over 500 right now, and it's looking like about to be seven games over 500. Oh, there's a nice scrum going on there in the background. Oh, but, yeah. uh, but, you know, I, I love it. It's it's just a great, great time to watch hockey. And, and I love to see the team do well. Absolutely. No, it, it's, you know, it's we good. had a coaching change and they seem to be responding to it. Um, yep. And whether this turns into a big, you know, a gutting and rebuild, I'm OK with that as long as they keep winning. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, guys, we want to thank you, uh, as always, for watching How About That Cigar and for listening to How About That Cigar. We want to bring on our special guest, and that segment, as always, is brought to you by Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com. They are the Internet's largest and easiest to use virtual cigar store. Corona Cigar Company offers you the finest handmade cigars, humidors, and cigar accessories at the absolute lowest possible price. Uh, you will also find unique and limited cigars containing Florida sun-grown tobacco. As a proud American, president and founder of Corona Cigar Company, Mr. Jeff Borshowitz, believed it was possible to bring cigar tobacco farming back to Florida. If you live in Florida or are just visiting, be sure to visit any of the great Corona Cigar locations in downtown Orlando, Sand Lake, Lake Mary, and also the Davidoff of Geneva Lounge in Tampa. For more info on all of that, please visit coronacigar.com and Florida sungrown.com boom so guys like i said we are excited to be here at tobacco grove and we have a such a special guest we're so excited yeah. to bring him in here so let's let's uh bring our guest into the show right now ladies and gentlemen if you would please put your hands together and welcome jeff hogan from crush cigars hogan. jeff welcome to the show man have him uh, get on his headphones and mic. Absolutely. Show. Can you hear us okay? All right. Can you see me okay? Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. Yes. And yes, I can hear you. Good, Good deal. Good deal. 
Well, we're so excited. We've been we've been wanting to put together, you know, some time to sit down and chat with you and let you tell the listeners and viewers about Crux and everything going on with Crux right now. And, and we're grateful to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. I know it's been a while to put this together. And yeah, it's all right. My, my travel schedule. And uh, thanks for being patient. Absolutely. You. If you yep. do me a favor and get that mic right in there so we yep. can just right. get yep. perfect. Eat Make it. out. Yep. Eat yep. It. Yep. It gets weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. treat, it like yeah. a, treat it like a cigar. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So, um, Jeff, obviously we're here, we're here at Tobacco Grove in Maple Grove, Minnesota, and we obviously, w- we want to talk about Crux, but part of that is a little bit of an origin story for you of how you came into the premium cigar world, what the premium cigar world means to you, and, you know, how that origin kind of came about. So give everybody a little bit of a backstory on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, so I've been in the, the premium cigar business for 29 years. Uh, of course, started off as a retailer in uh, Minneapolis, have owned uh, a few different stores over that time. Um, you know, I just, you know, I, you know, my story started where, like anybody, I, you know, when I was young, I was smoking Swisher Sweets while I was hunting. I was, you know, I spit a lot while I was doing that. No offense, but I did. Uh, you know, and I remember one time I went into a, um, a cigar store in Minneapolis and I thought, you know, maybe I'll buy a couple of handmade cigars. I've heard they're good, and I'll, I'll give a whirl. So I'll never forget my first experience. I walked into a retail store. <clears throat> I picked out two cigars. One of them was a Romeo and Julieta uh, 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 vintage, uh, which was at the time was owned by Hulk Roar, incredible cigar. Yeah. And then uh, the other cigar I bought was a uh, Dunhill aged Altamiras in, in the tube. Yeah. And, and I think both cigars at the time, I mean, don't quote me on this, but I think they're about $10 a piece. So I thought, wow, I'm, I'm kind of a big deal. I'm in here spending $20 and I'm going to burn it up yeah. on these two cigars. And and somebody walked in, uh, this guy was in a trench coat and uh, he walks in, he had a little nub cigar hanging out and I could smell it. And I was just loving that whole experience. And he was talking to the guy in the humidor. Um, the guy running him was Roger Bell that was at the old Golden Leaf many years oh, ago. Yeah. And uh, anyway, this customer says, hey, I... Uh, I, I want to know how many of these Romeo and Julietas you have left. And he says, well, I, and Roger says, I, you know, there's 17 left in the box, and I have a full box of 25 on top, and, uh, and, and but that's all I have. And I'm, I'm just kind of I'm in the background, you know, and I got my two cigars there. And the guy in the trench coat says, I'll, I'll take all of them. And I went, holy, you can't swear, can we? Oh, for holy, sure. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let it go. And so, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. And, you know, this guy's spending hundreds of dollars on these handmade cigars. And then the next thing that floored me was Roger Bell, the humidor manager at the time, says, listen, I'll sell you what's left in this box, but I'm not selling you the other box. i got to save them for other customers. And I went, holy shit, this guy's turning <laughs> down this multi-hundred dollar sale. And just a light bulb went off. And I'm like, I, there's got to be more to this. I don't know what's going on. And so... Uh, not too much later, uh, a couple weeks later, I was driving in South Minneapolis. I was, I was driving around, and I saw this for, uh, for, for rent, for lease sign in a window. I called the number on my big fat phone, uh, my cellular phone, uh, and I said, uh, hey, what, how much you want for this space? I looked in the window and had, like, hardwood floors and uh, Wayne's coating, antique grass fixtures, you know, tin ceiling. And uh, the guy says, hey, listen, I live above it. I'm going to come down and I'm going to talk to you. And I said, uh, uh, I said, perfect. So he comes down. He says, well, what kind of business are you thinking of? Well, I'm thinking of handmade premium cigars. And this guy was, a re- I find out later, he's a retired police officer. And he looks at me and says, wait, people still smoke cigars? I said, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they do. I'm not really sure. I was sure of myself. But I said, I think so. She said, listen, I'll, let's do a month-to-month lease. You can get started. And so I, I opened what my year. Uh, that would have been 1992. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, so he says, listen, I'll charge you two hundred and seventy five dollars a month in rent. And then uh, you pay month to month. See how it goes. I'm not going to hold you anything. So I built out that store myself and um, opened the first store with, I think, six boxes of cigars. Um, <laughs> ran that for a while. Uh, you know, had a Volkswagen with a broken back window. I had it all, you know, some plastic taped in there. Ate ramen noodles every day. You know, um, I looked a little emaciated. I mean, I, I wasn't eating good food. Right. Uh, but I loved what I was doing. You know, first time in my life, I really loved what I was doing. And um, and, and then, you know, things started to grow and grow and grow. I, I finally took out a 
SBA loan, relocated the store to western suburbs of uh, uh, Minneapolis area, and I opened the store. And I think, I think the first uh, ten months in business back then, I probably sold seventy-five thousand dollars worth of cigars. And then the first ten months of business in the new location, I think I sold a million dollars worth of cigars. And oh, then, wow. and then you know the, the cigar boom kind of took off and. You know, so yes, I've been a retailer for quite some time, and and um, since then I've sold that store. Um, I, I still own Tobacco Grove. I have a wonderful uh, staff that runs it. Hired them about five, six years ago to to run this place. They do a great job. Uh, keep, you know, I keep it because of, of course the friendships and the relationships, the connections I have in the retail store. Uh, it also gives me, uh, you know wonderful feedback and how things are doing out in the marketplace, what brands are doing well, what brands not necessarily struggling, but what brands could do better. So I'm just constantly trying to learn. Yeah. And uh, so that's why I keep the store and it's, and it's great. Um, I, I love it. Uh, and, you know, and then, but what I found over the years, of course, in the, you know, listen, I love the state of Minnesota, but the taxes have not been very favorable for this state. Uh, you know, for, for many years, we had a high tax rate, 2005. Uh, the health impact fee was um, imposed an, an additional 35%. We had a floor stock tax. I closed the store at the, another store at that time to kind of mitigate, you know, our financial burden and, and secure our, our chance of, of um, uh, being alive in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then I said, you know, there's just got to be something more. So, I, you know, I. I, you know, like any retailer, anybody that's in the industry, anybody that's even a consumer, we all love to go to these factories. We love to learn. We go through the fields. We, you know, we see the, you know, the seeds and the, and the soil and the, and the growing, the harvest, the, you know, the curing barns. We see, you know, fermentation rooms, the entire process. And you know, that's all pre-production. And then, you know, production, we see the sorting and the, and the assembly of the cigar, the quality controls, the packing, and, and that whole process was fascinating to me. And the more I went down to some of these retailer trips, the more I just fell in love with the other side of that business. And then also knowing that in this state, it's, you know, you're only as good as your next day, right? So, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe a brand would make some sense. So um, not to ramble on too much here, no, but go then, for it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, to get everybody up to speed then in 2012, I started to just learn about tobacco. Yeah. So every month for about, uh, two and a half years, I would go to Central America, Dominican Republic, and I travel all over and I took about three months a year, just learning, being a student about tobacco, uh, being involved in blending sessions and, and, uh, a lot of cigar manufacturers who had factories were very gracious in allowing me to come in and spend time and learn. And I've got some great mentors in this business. And and, uh, and I, I just want to make sure that if if I was going to do a brand at that time, that I, I really knew what I was getting myself into. I didn't want to just be a guy that came in with a checkbook. Not that I had any money in the bank at the time, but, uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, you know, I, I didn't want to go in there and just say, hey, let's make me some cigars and I'll do my best to sell them. I really wanted to know what we were doing. I wanted to be 100 percent involved in that blending process, which I am to this day. And uh, I really want to understand the ingredients, the components that make up a wonderful cigar. And, uh, you know, so as we we grow our company, um, I can, you know, we can continue to produce a great product with a consistent result. Yeah. Now to. <clears throat> uh Go back a little bit. Did you ever do like a house blend with anybody or any of that that really kind of fed that piece? Or was that independent of anything you would have done? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, I think most retailers over the, you know, their their career in retailing are going to be involved in some kind of private label. And there were several that we did. I don't think that really fueled anything okay. because, because your, your hands aren't really on it other than, uh, okay, what do you want to call it? You know, and, and, and then... You know, all right, smoke these three cigars. You guys pick one, and that's that's what you're going to get. You know, yeah. and, and that's a great program for a lot of re retailers mm -hmm. because they're proprietary products. They can get behind them. They can't buy them anywhere else, and that's that's a program that makes sense for a lot of people. But it certainly isn't something that, to answer your question, that that really generated that spark and and wanting to manufacture our own line. Yeah. Okay, so when obviously spending the the early time being a retailer, building up your retail business traveling to Central America a, a lot, learning as much as you could about tobacco. You had the opportunity along the way. You built a lot of relationships with a lot of different people. When the when the, when the the pendulum started in motion for Crux Cigars, what was it that made you decide that Placencia was the place for you for as far as the production and, and, and manufacturer of your, of your cigars? 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, you know, quite simple for me. I mean, I, I, I tend to be a little analytical at times. And so I wanted to spend time with each of the factories and there's a lot of great factories, some of which will uh, take on new uh, brand owners as, and, and they become your manufacturing partners. Um, and so essentially what I did over a period of time is I did my own SWOT analysis on uh, each of those factories, spending time in there, going through plenty sessions. I was looking for those strengths and weaknesses and those kind of things. And, um, you know, uh, I had an early connection with Placencia back in the 90s. Uh, Nestor Placencia, his son, uh, Gustavo, actually worked at uh, my retail store back oh, in the really? 90s. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of people know that. But um, uh, nice. at the time, uh, a gentleman by the name of Bill Bach, which is another Minnesota guy, he owned a company called Indian Head Sales. Uh, we, had a, we had a close relationship. And, um, and he, of course, was very close. Um, to uh, Nestor Placenta Sr., of course. Yeah. And, um, and so Nestor said, hey, Bill, in the States, uh, do you know any retailers, younger retailers, that could uh, kind of show my son what it's like to be a retailer, that side of the business? And Bill Bach recommended uh, my school at the time. So uh, he came in uh, on a number of occasions. He'd worked for 30 days at a time, just kind of learning the, you know, the business. And, um, you know, so I had that connection with him. Um, and, and knowing that going down there uh, to Nicaragua when I was looking at uh, producing uh, my own brand, um, you know, that, that was important. Relationships are extremely important. But most importantly, I was looking for a manufacturing partner that shared a similar vision of, 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 of how they grow, you know, you know the, of quality control standards and where the industry is going and um and what we can do to kind of grow that pie in this industry because that's the big challenge there's a lot of brands out there in this industry uh you know and i'm not trying to jump in this industry and take pieces of pie from certainly any of the big manufacturers we're very small but anytime you know a, a new brand comes out it's an opportunity to expose a, a new cigar smoker you know uh grow that pie yeah. and um and nestor and nestor andres nestor senior son um, you know, we spent a lot of time together and uh, we've had you know, long conversations about, you know, what this industry means to our families and what it means in, in our lives personally. But more importantly, how do we grow this industry? Uh, you know, uh, you know, because, you know, it might incrementally grow, but there's so many people in this world that really have never truly experienced uh, a handmade premium cigar yeah. and the connections a handmade premium cigars brings to one another. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're sitting here, you know, people are connected to you. I mean, we're all connected in some way. Yeah. And he shares that vision. So uh, I knew if we were going to build a company that, um, you know, once again, we, I'm trying to build a company that not for one, two, three years, but in decades. Uh, and, and so, uh, and, and knowing that, you know, and I went to a great seminar one time where it kind of taught you how to think in decades, not, you know, three to five years at a time, you yeah. know. And, um, and I'll digress a little bit, but we were sitting at this, you know, I was down in Lincoln, Nebraska. I was, I was invited by the owner of Capital Cigar, the owners of Capital Cigar. This, and we're sitting at this table and they said, OK, well, we're all connected here. But think about how much time you have left on this planet and the and the impact you have on others and what you can do for others, you know, for the rest of your life. And so, unfortunately, in my family, there's not a lot of uh, longevity. So we're sitting at this table. And, of course, there's some young people there. And there's mar there's a bowl of marbles right in the middle of the table and and and, the, and this guy running the seminar says i want everybody to think about knowing your family history your current health whatever it is how each marble represents a decade right and i want everybody to reach into that bowl and pick out how many marbles you think you have left on this planet you know oh ouch well, 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 well shit there's a bunch of young kids and they're grabbing <laughs> mitfuls of marbles right and i'm like how do i grab them Two or three, you know. I mean, that's that's my decision. Is it two or is it three? So I don't want to look like the oldest guy at the table. So I grab three, and uh, uh, and 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 I I carry those marbles with me in my backpack everywhere I go, and it's a constant reminder that I have basically three decades to have an impact on what we're doing as a company, um, and 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 we need to set this up the right way. And and back to circling and then back to your question. Um, I'm looking for manufacturing partners that, of course, are growing, that share a similar vision, yeah. that give back to the people that make these great cigars, um, and uh, and that 
certainly if we scale this company that can produce the quantity of tobacco consistently at the highest quality and at the highest level to uh, produce a consistent cigar from one box to the next. And so uh, that's why, you know, Nestor uh, is, and his family has been extremely important uh, in, in my life. Um, uh, AJ Fernandez as well. Uh, it's a newer relationship I have, but he shares that same vision. And, um, you know, and listen, I mean, they, they do anything for me. I do anything for them. Yeah. And I really feel that when I'm there. Oh, no, that's good. I'll give you a chance to relight your cigar there. Um, here's a here's some fire for you, Thank you. while I fire up this next uh, fire up this next question. Um, so, while you're working to you know start building a brand, you do a lot. There's a lot of planning that goes into it. I'm sure you're sitting down having conversations about how you want you know things to begin, the the way things are gonna you know the origin of the brand and things like that, and then. What what a lot of people saw is this huge curveball was this this uh, this seven by thirty three Nympha cigar, and a lot of people. I, I bet there were a lot of people that were saying, "Jeff, don't do don't do this, don't do this." <laughs> but you guys did it, and it was a success. And it's a it's a it's a cigar that people gravitate towards. What what led you to that decision to say we're coming out of the gate we're we're going to swing and we're going to go for it, right? Well, I, I think I think strategy is one of those. I think you know part of it is you know I, listen I'm I'm uh, I have no Cuban heritage. Uh, our company has no Cuban heritage, uh, but at the same token, we uh, we certainly like to pay pay homage to yeah. things that have been done right, and they've done a lot of great things, you know. Although I think Nick Rob was producing the best tobacco in the world, uh, but you know that true Nympha size was uh, was an it, it was an interesting uh, cigar, um, and actually it was uh, I was on a trip with a, a friend of mine uh, from Half Wheel actually Brooks Brooks Winning. Oh yeah, yeah. And we were talking about different sizes, and he says, uh, "Have you ever thought about a Nympha?" And I go, "A what?" You know, and that, I mean, so I got to give him credit because he said, "Well, it's really it's a it's a great size to to showcase and highlight." you know, a quality wrapper. Yeah. Right. And so we, so that whole cigar was designed to taste what I think the Placencia family produces some of the best tobacco in the world. Um, and th so that has that, uh, uh, Colorado Viso Jalapa wrapper. And, uh, and then we use an Indonesian binder on it because it's very neutral, but it's got great combustion for that thinner ring gauge cigar. Yeah. Um, it was a very, uh, initially very problematic cigar, uh, to roll. It took, uh, quite a few, months to get a, a team and there's a team of three that produces that cigar yeah so one of one of the reasons was to pay homage to some of the cuban tradition that i think has got our industry to where it is today the second reason is we we were a new company there was a lot of new companies at that time and so we were looking for something different something yeah. that kind of people took notice and said all right Maybe not be the best seller in their portfolio, but it's it's uniquely different enough that yeah. maybe I'll give it a shot. Yeah. And it was kind of fun because then we also look at what cigars can we build for the underserved markets. And there was nobody at the time building that cigar in regular production in the U.S. And of course, we do the double perfecto on it, so it's you know you know we used to call it the Nympha Maniac. We've kind of rebranded it to Nympha, uh, but that's what we did at the time. And and um, Yes, it has. It has been a success. It doesn't cannibalize sales in anybody's humidors across the country because there's just nothing else like it. So it was kind of a fun project to go. For. Now, tell us about bringing family members in to the fold, because um, as you know, any business owner will tell you, you know, don't do friends, don't do family. <laughs> and you were like, screw that. Let's do this. Yeah, I mean, I regret it every day. I, I mean, bet. so I probably should have yeah. taken people's advice. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> listen, I, you know, I, I, I grew up, um, you know, like many people, I grew up in a, in a house of, uh, you know, my parents divorced, my mother divorced several times. Um, at the time, I, I really didn't get to know uh, the Hogan side of the family. Uh, I was I was quite a bit older than my cousins. And so I really never got to know them. And it was, it, it, you know, and then as a, we became adults, we started to connect a little bit. And then I realized it was, it was a big hole in my life. And, and these and these guys, uh, you know, Casey and Tony, who are 
currently in the company and if we could get more of our family in the company we'd love it as well as we grow uh, but i'll tell you what it's it was the it was the best thing that's ever happened casey came on board with me he was running a uh, he was running a successful golf company in las vegas and uh, i just said hey is there uh, any chance you'd want to kind of jump in a, into the cigar business and he said with you i'm in I mean, it was that fast. Wow. And so nice. he relocated from Las Vegas to Miami. Uh, Tony Hogan um, is running our Midwest sales currently. That'll be for a period of time. And then he'll be one of the, the pillars in our organization as well, uh, opening up markets that we've identified. Um, but, uh, yes, I mean, it, it's it's been the biggest blessing of my life to work awesome. with these guys. Um, nice. And I don't know if my kids will ever be in the cigar business, but if these two guys want to continue to be in the cigar business it's it's theirs you know so i'm building it for all of us and uh and and i can truly say we can build this as a generational company because it's it's enriched all of our lives it's been it's been fantastic awesome that's great um so you know from the origins up until now obviously gradually you've built the crux cigars portfolio there's 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 something really for every cigar smoker to choose from so, you know, from the passport to the Epicure to the Bull and Bear, talk us through, talk us through the, the, the lines that you guys have and where a premium cigar smoker, where one of our viewers or listeners is going to find their sweet spot in your portfolio. Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, you know, what, I, what we're trying to do when I'm thinking about blending, I'm not thinking about subjective terminology. I'm looking at, number one, what's, you know, does, does it have balance and does it, uh, does it have, uh, it, you know, it, what I learned very quickly is if you use great tobacco, you just start with great tobacco, it's going to turn out to be a pretty good cigar. And, uh, you know, so it's finding those right combinations, putting them together. Um, we also want to, but to build a portfolio that you could take any cigar smoker that, you know, if they're, they puff on the cigar, they don't retrohale, but they want it light. We got the Epic here, right? So we kind of made this whole list of what a cigar smoker looks like, what they're looking for. And we tried to, build a portfolio that, you know, that, hey, if you walk in any retailer and they're carrying the full line of crux, there's going to be something that would be well, that you should be willing to try, yeah. you know, now, whether it's your cigar or not, you know, time will tell the proof is in the pudding. Uh, but we're really trying to build a, uh, initially a rounded uh, portfolio for our base products. Yeah. That doesn't mean we're not going to come out with limited, you know, uh, productions. And we've got a number of cigars that we've limitedly released. Uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, before 2016, you know, and, and so you'll see those come out over time. Yeah. Uh, so any any time we can find new tobacco, new wrappers, new fillers that can offer a unique experience, because I think that's what cigar smokers want. There's there's cigars that they want every day um, and then there's cigars that they want to try. Um, no different than bourbon or wine. You're just you're always trying to experiment. At least I think most of the people that are you're, that are listening to your uh, your show here, they, they're, they're always experimenting. They're always exploring. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what we're doing too. We're exploring, we're exploring new tobaccos, but we want to at least have a baseline of products that people can uh, go to and say, Hey, great cigar consistently every time. So that's what we strive and hopefully we're, uh, we're accomplishing that. Yeah. Have you made the transition from businessman to cigar guy? <laughs> so, and when you say cigar guy, what what's your definition? Like you are into the culture of cigars, you you enjoy cigars, you know, it's kind of cigar first, and then business guy second. Or, yep. you know, tell me, you know, because the way that you started out was very, you know, I guess people smoke cigars. You know, it wasn't this big passion. You know, I have a love for cigars. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open the shop. You know, right. it started very late, you know. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question because, uh, yes, I mean, I, I enjoyed them. But when I started as a retailer, I wasn't passionate about them, right? Yep. What I, what I realized is the more I try, the more I really enjoy. Um, but, you know, I, I decided at some point, like any business, to start any business, there's always that honeymoon, right? So the first year honeymoon when I was as a retailer was fantastic. I mean, this is fun. I'm smoking all these different cigars. We're hanging out in cigar stores, selling, selling, selling. And then year two, you're like, what the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, this is a ton of work. 
Yeah. You know, and, and retailers, I mean, I feel not feel for them, but I know what it's like to be a retailer. That's where I started. And retail stores can I mean they can hold you hostage, right? And and there's long hours and, and certainly billing and I did all that stuff. And I think I think um, I had some great mentorship throughout my life. And that's one thing that I credit the <coughs> excuse me, the cigar the cigar industry for bringing in people in retail stores that that do have uh, a love for premium cigars, maybe not a passion, but certainly a, a love, or, an, or they enjoy them. And you know, it's not like I opened a retail store when I was 22 years old, and and guys were coming in saying, "Hey, you know what? My washing machine just broke. I have to buy a new washing machine," and they're a little pissed off, right? Yeah. No, they're in there and they want to buy. And so I, you know, but one of my mentors just said, "Listen, once that honeymoon's over, you got to start looking at this as a business, and then it's up to you to reinvent yourself. It's up to you." to enjoy what you're doing day in and day out, because it doesn't matter what you do, yep. that honeymoon period is gonna end, and then it's up to you to figure out how to, how to make it exciting. And so I made it exciting by growing sales, I made it exciting by uh, you know building an organization. Yeah. And, and in the cigar business, um, you know, what I realized like in 2012, when I started going down there, I mean, I wasn't like a tobacco man, right? I mean, I've got less experience you know, than a lot of these you know, great cigar builders in the industry, but I'm always learning. I'll always continue learning. In, in 10 years from now, we might be sitting here and I'm still learning. I and mean, that's what I, I love, right? That's awesome. And, and people that I think, I think when you, when, when you're inquisitive and you want to learn that passion grows, that passion fuels and people mm -hmm. that geek out about cigars are the people I want to talk to because, yep. because I mean, they get it right. I mean, they just, they just feel it. And the more you learn, the more it just fills you up. And, and that's why I'm still in Nicaragua every single month, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm down yeah, maybe 10, 10 times out of the year. And, and Casey's in Nicaragua, and we're just we're constantly learning how do we build a, a better product? How do we learn more about the process? I mean, yeah. um, and, you know, and so that passion's there. So that I think I was more of that than anything. The business side of things, I'm, I've realized like three years ago, I really got to learn the business side of this industry because I had the experience of being a retailer, but owning a brand, you're, it's a you know it's a function of sales and distribution. You need a little magic. You need all this little stuff that happens, right? You're really building a true organization. It's all stuff in which I had no experience. In. So um, I've really committed to learning that side of the business, and yeah. and I feel like we've made some good choices here in the last year and a half, and, yeah. and we're moving in a, in a good direction with the momentum. Well, the um, I remember years ago when uh, um, when I was still with Blind Man's Puff, we were at the IPCPR show, and Casey handed us the the year that the Epicure first came out. He handed us some, and we lit them up. And I remember Casey said those were rolled 13 days ago, and all of us after the show was over, we said the best cigar we smoked on the trade show floor was the Epicure, and we could we were blown away by the fact that it was only a 13 day old cigar, but it was it, it was a it was a great blend and then the epicure we're smoking the epicure maduro right now and the epicure maduro comes along a couple years later and it's got you know it's got that it's got what you want from a maduro it's earthy it's sweet it's 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 got that pungence to it that richness to it and dirty and mm. what was the what was that like that process of of putting together that you know taking the epicure the, the the mild yet super flavorful cigar and then saying okay we're gonna make a maduro iteration of this cigar and we 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 can't put this cigar on the market until we know it's just right so what was that process like putting that we're cigar gonna go together? to 11 we're gonna go to 11 yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I, I'll tell you it, it's um the maduro took a lot longer than than we hoped it would and um, like like anything we build we want to make sure that it's right the epicure yeah once again, if you start with great tobacco, I think you're going to produce a great cigar. And um, one of Nestor's top guys, the top guy for tobacco in his organization, uh, Ricardo, he came to me one day and he said, listen, I've got this filler tobacco. I knew we want to, we, we needed a Connecticut of some sort. Uh, so I sourced out the best Connecticut wrapper we could find. Right? Yeah. And so, and even of that Connecticut, we're still, we're buying you know, grade A, level seven, you know, light brown wrapper. And we're still only yielding 62% first class, that first class for us that we're yeah. going to use on an Epicure cigar. 
we've been parking class two, class three, all that stuff on the side, you know, but we still want our wrappers, everything that we do to look the best, you know. Yeah. Uh, but Ricardo, said, I said, I, you know, we, I need a base plan that we can wrap this where it's got some flavor, but I want it to have some body as well. And he came to me and said, we got this, this tobacco, uh, came out of a small farm that they financed, uh, Pueblo Nuevo, just outside of Condega. Yeah. He says, mm. let's work with this. And the end of story. It was that easy to get the wow. epicure done, right? And so blended with that, got the right binder, you know, a couple of tweaks, but not that difficult, yeah. right? I mean, start with great tobacco, produce a good cigar. But then the Maduro, we were just having an issue with wrapper. We just couldn't find the right wrapper. Um, you know, I've been buying different tobacco from AJ Fernandez. I'm sitting in his office one day, and um, I said, that wrapper you have, that Mexican San Andreas, I mean, it's the best I've ever had. I need to buy some from you. He just, every time I was down, nope, 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 <laughs> you know, no. And I and, and then one day he says, I'm not selling it to you. Don't He's, ask he me. He says that to a lot of people. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he says, but Jeff, for you, I'll make you that cigar. You know, what's your blend? What are you doing? And so so we worked on that project. And that was the first cigar we did with A.J. Fernandez. Yeah. And so, uh, which has been great. His quality controls are are, are matched to, you know, the Placencias. And, um, it, you know, so that became kind of an easy project, you know. Yeah. And then th there will be, I can let you know, I haven't told anybody else, is there will be another Epicure edition at the PCA show this year. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. And that'll be... We won't tell anyone. Yeah. yeah. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. Um, and if anybody's watching, don't share this with anybody. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll have another, we'll have a third edition. And that'll that'll round off the Epicure line, uh, but there will be an Epicure Habana. And, um, and that'll come out at the PCA show. So... Nice. Yeah. So your first, uh, when you launched Crux, you had this kind of medieval theme thing going with uh, the branding and the, the graphic and everything. And recently you've rebranded and gone a, a different direction. Tell us a little bit about that process and what that was about. Yeah, sure. Um, so, our, so our brand, um, when we started, uh, listen, I love the, the way it looked. and We had some great things going on. We had some kind of fun, whimsical language in our branding and that kind of stuff. And, uh, but you know, when we, when we got into year five, uh, I really want to make sure that we were doing things the right way. So, um, I, you know, I challenge it. Listen, we just want to sell more cigars. We want people, more people yep. to experience what we're doing. So, you know, we had, we had our, our brand live tested with, uh, cigar smokers and non cigar smokers, and we got some invaluable feedback and, and the biggest, feedback we received was people couldn't read our our logo right okay and, and huh. um you know and yes it was more kind of that that cult feel kind of thing uh but we're trying to build you know a company a company by decade we want to make sure our branding's correct that's the time to do it yeah uh, internally collectively we all talked about it. What's the best? What's the best path for Crux moving forward? Mm -hmm. And we decided we wanted something that was uh, cleaner, more simple, uh, certainly more modern, uh, timeless, and elegant. And um, you know, if you look at any major brand in the industry, in any industry right now, particularly luxury, you know, uh, they've all simplified their logos. It doesn't matter if it's Versace or Burberry. I mean. Weight Watchers, WW with a circle <laughs> around, right? Right. And, and we're inundated with uh, uh, gross impressions uh, through social media, pop-ups on everything, that, on, on all of our feeds. And what they're finding out is if the branding is complicated, if it's not simple, uh, the, our brains just kick it out. And yeah. so that was a big reason we took a look at it. It was painful, expensive. Oh, um, I bet, yeah. You know, and yeah. so, and we said, if we're gonna do this, let's just, let's, let's build this brand in a perfect world. And if we can do it, we'll do it. If we yep. can't afford it, we won't do it. Yeah, we barely afforded it, but we got <laughs> it done. You know, and so that's where we're at now. And so we're really just trying to clean things up. And what I can say is the brand now at retail since it's launched five only five short months ago, yeah, five months ago, is uh, we're seeing about the reorder rates are about two and a half times what they were before. Wow, and, and that's whew, outstanding. Yeah. So we were looking for branding with more. Uh, you know, some more vibrance in, in its in its color palette. Yeah. Uh, you know, cleaner, simpler. Yeah. Of course, uh, went to the slide top uh, five packs instead of the paper wraps. Yep. You know, nice, much nicer cigar box. Uh, we have some information on the inside lid of the cigar box. And uh, now, when you walk, because our branding, like a lot of brands, they're 
a lot of brown, a lot of, you know, it's a sea of brown in the humidor. So yeah. we wanted to, and I think now you walk in and you walk in the humidor and you'll, when you're, if you're looking for crux, they have it, you're going to see it. Yeah. You know, it, it jumps out. Now. Well, so, and that's one of the things the that when the, the logo came out first and then the packaging picture started to come out. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it was this Epicure Maduro that, that stood out the most to me because this, this sort mm-hmm. of aqua color, just it pops so much against that super dark brown wrapper. So yep. I, I think this is this is just and, and all the all the color schemes are great, but something about this Epicure Maduro, that color just pops. It I does. It. Yep, absolutely. Uh great job. So I Thank you know, I haven't heard um the response from a, an official standpoint, but everybody that I've talked to, you know, yeah, that box pops in a humidor, you know, against everybody else and uh the you know, like Matt was saying, the uh, colors, colors, that's the word you're looking yeah. for. <laughs> Words are hard. Words are so hard. You know, the colors and uh, Chad uh, says, I like the look you have invested well with the rebrand. Good job. Yeah. So, thanks. Thanks, Chad. Uh, a lot of people have, you know, are, are agreeing and uh, yeah, it shows. Well, it's, and it's it's obviously making making inroads with sales. I mean, if 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 you're seeing increases, then then obviously somewhere in there, you know, a move was the right one. Right, and we didn't know it was it was it was. I, I think there's a risk to anything you do. To, Absolutely, and, and we changed everything from our primary logo to our sub brand iconography to our 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 packaging across yeah. the board, our color palette, everything changed, and so it was kind of a it's kind of a big risk, and so. When it finally launched, we debuted at the uh, PCA show last year in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we were a little nervous, and I, I would say I would say of our current retailers probably had five percent of them that came and said, "Why'd you do that? I loved your old branding." But then we had a number of people that came up to say, "Wow, this is you know." And retailers said, "We want to carry that brand. It's going to fit in our humidor." And yeah. so, I, you know, five percent says they don't like it. Maybe that number is as high as twenty percent. I don't know, but I'll take those numbers any day. Absolutely. Uh, with at the risk of offending people that love the old branding, and, and we like the old branding. But once again, we're you know we're in the business of selling cigars, and yep. we want to get noticed out there. Well, and Absolutely. here's here's the great thing is at the end of the day, if if somebody you know is is a little bit upset because they love the look of the old branding, the cigars are the same. The tobacco is the same. The blends are the same. And that's what really matters is that at the end of the day, they're going to get the same product and they're going to get the same smoking experience. So, you know, hopefully they'll get over the branding. They'll move on and and just still keep loving the cigars. Absolutely. You know, all in all, it's been extremely positive. You know, the sales guys, as we're growing our sales organization, are are having a lot of success at retail and, and because of the new package. So uh, yeah. it, it's paying off. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, and Dave, uh, Dave Frakes. Um, He's a guy down in Texas, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, Dave uh, says, uh, Jeff is part of the family here in Frisco, Texas as well. And uh, he says uh, their sales are up 218%. You know, Dave, so, Dave, it should be 300%. Come on, Dave. I'm going to call you for an order tomorrow. we got to get those numbers <laughs> up. Um, those are rookie numbers in this business. you got to get those numbers. you got to get those numbers up. <laughs> uh, but, but the... But, you know, in full transparency, I mean, the Frakes family are, are, I mean, they are close friends. That's what I love about this. There's so many retailers that you have these close friendships with. Uh, In fact, you know, Dave's son is the marketing company that's, uh, oh, great. That's done all the new rebranding. They do our marketing. They've done our series of videos. He he and his uh, his name's Brandon Frakes and his, his partner, Gabe Harris. These two guys are, it's been a blessing in my life. Great people. Uh, look at our industry with a totally different, um, you know, what's Dave saying now? Dave says we suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but you throw a hell of a, ha- a Halloween bash. There you you know? go. <laughs> Casey and I went to their Halloween bashes, Hans and Franz. Uh, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So we got to make fun of a lot of people and call them flabby. It was yeah. Fun. <laughs> that's awesome. So. You already uh, revealed the fact that you are going to be at the PCA trade show this year, and and I think that's fantastic. There's been obviously a lot of talk, blah blah blah, going on around about some companies not going. Um, but I I appreciate hearing about companies that are going to still go and participate. Um, what does the trade show really really mean to you? Because I think about some of these brands that aren't going to be there, and and I think about what they're honestly I think about what they're missing out on. 
regardless of how big they are. You know, it's the, it's not a it, it's 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 so much about sitting down face to face with your retailers and 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 uh, the ones that you already know. It's like a reunion, and the ones that you haven't met yet, you get to build new relationships. And I see them missing out on that. So what is what does the trade show really mean to you? Not just in terms of sales, but in terms of you know just your relationships with your retailers. So I mean, we're we're a young growing company. So what other opportunity do we have as a young growing company to be in front of several hundred prospective retailers yeah. uh, in, in a one week period of time? Yeah. You know, for us to get in front of that many retailers will take two years on the road. Uh, you know, so you know, for us it means everything. Um, you know, and, the, you know, the organization is selfless and I get there's two sides of the story. You know, the, 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 the manufacturers that have pulled out, um, listen, they have their reasons. We all know why. Um, you know, I, I certainly would have loved to see a little more communication. And I know that apparently tried to take place. But in the meantime, our industry uh, has a big fight. You know, we're in a big fight. Yeah. And so our industry needs to be unified. Um, and, you know, from from every you know from the consumer to the all the way to the manufacturer, and yeah. and everybody in between needs to be unified in this fight. And so it's really Amen. important that we support this show. Um, and you know, and once again, they have their reasons. I hope they jump back in. Um, you know, and but for us, it's it's a great opportunity to connect with retailers. Uh, you know, we're out there. We're talking to retailers. I mean. It's the same old thing, you know, retailers are in the Midwest. It's hard for them to leave their stores uh, when it's the busiest time of the year for them. Um, but yet most retailers will be there. And so uh, that face to face time is important to us. And let's face it, we don't a company like ours doesn't show up. Even the big even the big guys that pulled out retailers only have so many dollars. You're going to you're going to see a lot of those. Those people that pulled out offered some pretty big deals to the retailers to incentivize them to get those orders in and collect those dollars before the retailers get to the show and spend all their money. And so it's it's more important than ever for us to be uh, supportive of the PCA and their collective effort and, and what they represent to the industry, what they mean to the industry, the, the, the amount of money that's spent by the PCA in the legislative fight, I feel like... Mm-hmm. I feel like the momentum has shifted a little bit, like yeah. we're making a little bit of progress. There's a long way to go, yep. and it'll always be there. But um, but we need everybody in that fight. And so so we can support the PCA by uh, you know having our booth and paying our money. Yep. And at the same time, we get to connect with our retail partners and and uh, potentially sign up some, um, some new retailers. So yeah. it's, it's great for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Now, when you go out to the show, do you go for the brand Crux um, exclusively, or do you also represent the shop? I, uh, I sad to say, but I I have very little involvement in the retail operation. Right on. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the the crew that that runs it, um, my GM uh, Rick Baker and his staff Cole and all the other guys that do such a phenomenal job. Uh, so to answer your question. I'm 100% there uh, at the for show Crux. for Crux. I mean, yeah. Tobacco Grove has been around for a long time. It it does fine. It uh, it pays its bills. It, it you know, but you know, we still have a lot of a lot of work to do for Crux. Right. And you know, to get that word out. And so I, I need to put all my time and energy into that brand. Yeah. And and that's what we're doing now. There may be a couple of booths i stop by and say hi because a lot of these people are industry friends and i've had oh yeah great mentorship from from all the guys thank you mark um Thanks, mark. you know from you know rocky patel and alan rubin i mean uh skip martin i mean there's so many guys that have helped me along the way uh and you know so it's important to walk around and see those guys as well so yeah. yes I, i'm there for clubs okay yeah. um well let's let's shift really quick we're going to go into one of our next segments here and this uh, this segment is called Smokabulary, and Smokabulary, as always, guys, is brought to you by AJ Fernandez. Born and raised in Cuba, AJ Fernandez now produces unparalleled premium cigars in Esteli, Nicaragua. The day-to-day operations at Tabacalera AJ Fernandez are managed under the watchful eye of Mr. AJ Fernandez himself, in order to ensure superior quality. The AJ Fernandez portfolio of premium cigars provides blend, strength, and flavor profiles to match the preferences of any premium cigar consumer. 
Whether it's New World, Dias de Gloria, San Lutano, Enclave, or Bayas Artes, you are sure to be satisfied with a premium cigar from AJ Fernandez. So, guys, this week's smokabulary word, smokabulary word is pilone. Pilone. And Jeff, you know this word pilone. well. So the the pilone is uh, is a key part of the process in making premium cigars. It's that it's it's that that beautifully arranged pile of tobacco leaves that you know it, it's so, it's this wonderful natural magical process of of moisture and heat and pressure that that moisture. just you know dissipates the uh, <laughs> moist <laughs> moist everybody everybody's favorite word that that you know that fermentation process that dissipates the ammonia and and you know darkens the leaf and and refines the flavor profiles and everything and you've been in those those places where those polones are all stacked up it's just it, it's it, the smell in that room is overwhelming isn't it it can be yeah. i mean there's uh, in those fermentation rooms i mean there's there's of course uh, uh, different ways to uh, ferment tobacco uh, pilon to pilon every pilon will uh, ferment uh, at a different rate yeah. and uh, you know so uh, you know some some factories as they're processing that tobacco will uh, individually uh, ferment those pilones uh, other factories may add some humidity into the air to kind of uh, moisture uh, yeah, moist sure <laughs> yeah yeah okay uh, and you know so everybody's got their different process but uh, that's what's uniquely different about premium tobacco is yeah. that's the single most important part of premium tobacco is the process you're talking about is taking this tobacco, creating a pilone, a big giant bale that I want to sleep in every night, pile of tobacco, mm, yeah. uh, closely monitoring it, its temperature, uh, making sure that, uh, that, that tobacco doesn't reach reach a point of deterioration and what you're doing is you're sweating out the ammonia the arsenic all the are the potentially harmful uh, chemicals that are in tobacco so you're left with a very clean leaf at the end of it yeah. and so um, I, I love spending time in those uh, fermentation rooms um, and, and I, I was just there I don't know four days ago spending yeah. a lot of time with with AJ with Nestor and um, you know one of my favorites uh, and, and curing bars but that's a, that's a different yeah uh, what do you call it smokabular yeah smokabular yeah, smokabular, yeah. 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 So is that the the pilon? Is that where the um, where I've I've seen some video of uh, different blenders will uh, take some tobacco off and they'll just light it and smell it. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, people that are really in charge of processing the tobacco. Uh, once again, every pilon may age and ferment at a uh, or ferment not age, but ferment at a different uh, pace. And sometimes, you know, you can have tobacco at, that's that's processed only for nine months. And uh, it's 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 truly unique. It's truly ready to be maybe potentially used in some kind of blend. Yeah. Others may take a year and a half. May take longer than a year and a half. You know. So you never really know. There isn't like a you know every pilone is different. You know. And that's why they chart it. That's why every day uh, th those temperature readings are taken. Um, it's a slow methodical process of breaking down those pilones and, yeah. and rebuilding them. So you've got consistency throughout the pilone and. Uh, but yes, I mean, you, you will taste that. It's not aged tobacco, but it'll right. give you at least an idea yeah. of, of how it's how it's uh, fermenting yeah. uh, and when it's ready to break down, bail, and start to age. Well, and one of the one of the coolest things that I got to experience when I was at some different factories in Nicaragua was you go in and you see those polones and they they temperature check them with these long probe thermom thermometers just to check on temperature and progression probe. and stuff like the probe. There's another moist probe. I missed it. And How did probe. I miss probe? I, I, I gave you a second. Thanks, and you man. Missed it. I did. I, no, I. You were well within your right. He said probe. I threw up a softball and you just sat there. I did. I let Jeff, the strike go Jeff by. Jeff was on the ball. Jeff yeah. was on the ball. So, the, and they would they would have a couple guys go over and lift up a section of the pilone, and you can stick your hand in there a ways, and it's hot. I really? Mean, it's and it's just and it's just natural. They don't. They don't have ovens or anything like that. It's just natural from the process of the weight of the tobacco leaves with a little bit of moisture in there. Just that pressure pushing down naturally creates heat. And those, like you were saying, the 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 ammonia and those different chemicals, they sort of create this natural heat process. And it's just it's the coolest thing because they they these polones that sometimes are the size of a car, 
they disassemble them on a on an almost daily basis, and then you know the leaves from the bottom go to the top, and so everything gets evenly fermented. And it's just the coolest process to see. It's I love a, it. It's a, it's a great. It's fascinating. Yeah. You know? But it's like uh, I don't know if you've ever composted. I was just gonna say it's, it's, got, it's, it's like thing. composting. I'm composted. The inner core is gonna go through a molecular change. It'll heat yeah. up, reaches a point of deterioration, and that compost pail, you know, goes down. And, and and tobacco is the same way. It'll reach a point of deterioration. It's important to make sure that you know they keep the temperature, uh, you know, s- you know, co- cooler and a little more steady, a little longer is probably best, you know. Yeah. And but yeah, fascinating. Yeah. We'll, we'll get you down this one. So guys, that's uh, that's this week's smokeabulary word. Smoke. Pilone. So bro. let's move into my. Oh, I, I missed that one. I thought it was pro. Pro. <laughs> That'll be next week. Okay. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> or moist, maybe yeah. moist, yeah. maybe moist. So yeah. uh, now we're going to move into my favorite segment of the week, and we're very excited because this segment is now sponsored. So now it's time for Numero de los Muertos. Well, guys, uh, I, like Matt said, super excited to have this segment um, uh, be brought to you by Oveja Negra Brands, brings you premium smoking experiences. Forged from tobacco, time, and talent. Compromised of Black Label Trading Company, Black Work Studio, Dissident, and Emilio Oveja Negra Brands provides smokers uncompromising blends renowned for their flavor and lasting impression. Oveja Negra, where art and tobacco collide. Join the flock. Visit OvejaNegraCigars.com to learn more. Word. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Absolutely. We're, we're so excited to have uh, Oveja Negra Brands part of the HBTC family. So so what is this week's Numero de los Muertos? 17. The number is 17 this week? Globally. Okay, so yearly? Yearly. Every year, on average, 17 people die from this Okay. globally. And um, this is, uh, I will say, it's a fun activity. Well... Not fun for those 17 not, people. Not fun for the 17 people <laughs> and their loved ones, certainly. But, uh, yeah, it, it goes from fun to not fun really quick. <laughs> A lot of things are that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Am I supposed to guess or you have people? Yeah, guess? No, we're going to guess. Yeah, we'll have viewers guess. We'll have you guess. Wow. Wow. Skydiving? Mm. That's a good guess. No. Mm. So it's not skydiving. All right, you said it's a fun activity. It is a fun activity. Um, it's not. Well, it's not cigar smoking. It, no, no, no. Do, no, do no. we get any clues? Uh, I'll keep giving oh, clues okay. as we. Right. Yeah, uh, right. but feel free to ask yes or no is, questions. Is, is it a individual activity or? It is, a, well, it, or is it, it a most group of the activity? time it can be a group activity. Okay, but most of the time it's uh, it's uh, one person. Okay. Um, is it, I don't know why I'm thinking, is it fishing? No. Okay. So, uh, there are places all over the world that have these in them, but in this region, we typically only do it about four months out of the year. And so in the Midwest here? Correct. Is it golf? It is not golf. Mm. Ooh, that's. Is, do we have any guesses from the. We've got a couple skydiving, uh, uh and then a comment about the coronavirus. <laughs> Dave says is, cigars kills the coronavirus too. I agree. It probably does. So, yeah. so enjoy, keep enjoying your premium cigars. Yeah. In keep, this region. In this region. Four months out of the year. Yeah. So only during the, the warmer months. Mm-hmm. Warmer months. Okay. Yep. Well, that helps. Uh, yeah, okay. That helps. I'm going to say uh, um, roller coasters. Ooh. You are getting warm, my friend. But okay. no. Not roller coasters, but warm. Mm, Phil, uh, water skiing, and Greg with water skiing. That is close, but no. Murdered by circus carnies? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> no. Oh, God, I thought I had <laughs> That was a great guess. <laughs> it was. Because we've all seen some shady carnies. I'm sorry, but we've we've all seen them. Sorry, Chad. Not much surfing here in Minnesota. Um... Is it is it amusement park related? Yes. 
Oh. It, most of the time, you know, this uh, this takes place at an amusement park. What is a is it a ride? It's not really a ride because there's other places that outside of amusement parks that are just this, but in Minnesota, um, is it a is it a particular carnival game? No, no, it's not. A, what the hell, slide. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. What do I win? What do I win? What do I win? <laughs> you win bragging rights and our eternal yeah, I'll admiration. Take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. The yeah, giant the slide? Water slide. Oh, water slide. Yeah, okay. water slide. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, well, yeah, you really can only do that. Although there are some hotels that have indoor water slides. They do slides, have some indoor ones. but it doesn't really count. No. Um, so, yeah, there's uh, this one particular one in the Netherlands that... I don't know why it's still open, to be honest, because in, in doing my research for this, I found out that um, like uh, out of that 17, like four people a year die on this thing. Just this one Just this water one slide. huge, like, you shouldn't do this. <laughs> How do you stay in business yeah. with that kind of death rate? I yeah, mean, with that kind of liability on can you. Can you imagine? Because like, the, there's only 10 people that do that slide every year. So that, right. Yeah, that's yeah. a high mortality rate. That's a very right. high yeah. mortality yeah. rate. Yeah. You know, and it's the Netherlands, so people probably get stoned to the bejesus, and they're like, <laughs> dude, I could totally <laughs> do that. That's it. Dude, I can do that. I can I can do that. I can, it's I nothing, can, bro. I can work that, man. Bro, it's nothing. Bro. <laughs> Let's, I'm going there. Yeah, I'm, do it. I'm doing it. Do it. It's going on my bucket list. Live stream it. and. Yeah. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna wear some padding, but uh, maybe <laughs> maybe some, a goalie outfit. A, but I'm going. There you go. a, a scuba suit. <laughs> <laughs> wear a full scuba suit. Oh man, that's a good one. So that is this week's numero de los muertos. Nailed it. Nailed it. So Jeff, this <laughs> probed it. Probed it. <laughs> probed it. Probed it. It was well to water slide, so it's moist. A very, very moist, <laughs> very, slide. very moist water slide. <laughs> All the moist. Oh, maybe not happening. moist enough. Maybe that's maybe, maybe, maybe that's it. Yeah, it's oh, too friction. Oh, you don't want too much friction. Oh. They're making that squeaking noise as they going oh. down. Oh. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> All the skin peels off. Oh yeah, love it. Mm. Love it. Everybody's tuning out right now. <laughs> so Jeff, this part is like a lightning round that aren't really necessarily cigar related questions, but they're a little off the cuff. Mm -hmm. If you could hear the thoughts of one living person for 10 minutes, who would it be and why? One living person for 10 minutes. Yeah. You could hear their thoughts. Well, it, it, it'd have to be Trump at this point. It'd have to. Yeah. That's a, that is the it's, most popular answer. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. You know, because, I mean, who knows what's going on in his head. And right? no matter you know? where you are politically, that. You yeah. just want to know. No, you want to yeah. know. You want to know. You want to know. Yeah. Is he really thinking about all this stuff? Right. You know, or is he just, or is it just like a, a, a baby mobile, you yeah. know? Like, oh, yeah. maybe he's, maybe he's got a, a, a tweet wheel. There know? it is. And yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, let's do it. Yep. You know, someone built him a tweet. I, I yeah. don't know. But that would be uh, that would be a hilarious sketch for Saturday Night Live. Is, he's got a wheel is, of tweets in the in his bedroom, and he just he's like, "What are we gonna say?" And he spins the wheel. Let's offend these people. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I don't know how you you know any president, any you know active president, yeah. current president of the United States. I mean, what must go through the mind in? Not ten minutes, but thirty seconds. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I, I, I yeah. take thirty seconds. Yeah, right? yeah, you know, and it's pro it's probably a lot. I hope it's a lot with him. I hope it's a lot. I hope, I it's, hope a lot. it's a lot with any president. Yeah, I, yeah. I would want to hear Obama's thoughts too. I'd want to yeah, hear absolutely. Bush's thoughts and Clinton's thoughts. Everybody's thoughts. I would just because, like you said, they probably, hopefully, they're they're going through more processing in their mind in thirty seconds than we are in five minutes. Right. Hopefully. Right. Or the day. Or the day. Yeah. In my case, the day. In my case, right. Yeah. Or Lincoln's thoughts. Lincoln. This play is gonna suck. <laughs> oh, too soon. Yeah. Um, maybe still too soon. Yeah. Too no, soon. I, it no. may always be too soon. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was the, the the old joke from? I don't even remember who it was, but you know, aside from that, Mrs. Lincoln, did you enjoy the play? <laughs> <laughs> that, I'll say that's too soon. Oh, still too soon. I love <laughs> it. Definitely still too, too soon. soon. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, if you were about to get into a fight. What soundtrack music would come on? 
Uh, I have a tiger. There. <laughs> I mean, that's an obvious answer. That's, that's actually <laughs> you you're got the any first hard one. questions. <laughs> that's yeah, the that's first. The, I've been waiting for somebody to answer yeah. that. You're the, the first. first one? You're the first one, one to give that answer. We've we've heard the Rocky theme song, but I have a tiger is its own thing. Yeah, it's his own thing. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, because no, that wait. was from Rocky three. Rocky uh, four. Rocky three. Russian. I, I think it was three. Yeah. 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 That's a great answer. Just Dumb. getting me going right now. Dumb. Anybody that can fight? Dumb. Yeah. Let's Anybody want to fight? Any, no? No? No takers? Okay. A lot, of, a lot of people in here. It is. It's a great crowd. I love this. So choose one of the following. You could hit a home run as a starting pitcher. You could score a touchdown as a defensive lineman. Or you could score a goal in a hockey game as the goalie. Uh, pitcher home run. Pitcher home run. Great answer. Yeah. Great answer. Uh, yeah, I, I love I love football. Uh, I like all three of those sports. Yeah. Pitch or home run. Nobody's ever expecting it. Exactly. Right? It's always it's always a it's always a strikeout. Yeah. Right. And you know, just to get the bat on the ball is pretty yeah. pretty spectacular. Uh, yeah, even a pitcher getting a single is like a miracle. Yeah. So Some of these new pitchers can hit the ball. They can. Yeah. They can. Well, yeah. Different and breed out there right now. When uh, Bert Blylevin was uh still uh on the radio. He often talked about his three home runs. Yeah, you know, and for a pitcher, that must I be didn't know like he had three home runs, right? Yeah, but that was at like a little league game. You know, <laughs> that was, he was he was ten. I mean, it was a different time. You know? That was the bar league, was, which yeah. he was in when he was ten. <laughs> right, yeah. that's, not a, that's not a real thing. Full beard. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jeff, if you could give new cigar consumers one piece of advice, what would it be? I would say, you know, follow shows like this. Learn as much as you can. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, guys like you that are that are, you know, asking questions, digging in. I mean, it's it's that it's the learning that keeps us uh, that grows that passion. Yeah. And uh, there's there's so many different ways in which cigar manufacturers build cigars. I think we're in an extraordinary time where there's a, a lot of manufacturers building great cigars yeah the, the room for air the margin for air is the smallest it's ever been and so i think what's great and being a retailer back in the boom uh there was a lot of product that showed up on shelves that was very sub subpar yeah right mm -hmm. and I mean, they were just trying to fill spaces um as fast as that the industry was growing at the time those cigars kind of i think in some ways took down the industry as well and you know so knowing number one that we're in a, an extraordinary time of some of the best tobacco every grower i know is always pushing the boundary i mean they're always they're always trying new things they're trying new new regions new altitudes new uh growing methods yeah. they're always trying to improve they're always trying to learn and grow and so we're getting some of the best cigars we ever have in all the years yeah. that i've been in this business and so to learn what they're doing uh and and then I love as an industry, you know, and consumer asking questions, but that also, that also, I think, lends to some transparency with uh, cigar makers to yeah. let everybody kind of know what they're doing that's uh, improving their product. So I, I love all of it. Yeah. Ask questions. Um, so if you could give one piece, and as a retailer, retailer yourself and now a brand owner, if you could give one piece of advice to brick and mortar retailers, what would it be? Pretty simple. Um, I think every retailer uh, needs to have the mindset that it's not their store. It's their customer store. That's a and, great answer. And, and if you if you look at it that way, and so every customer you say, listen, this is your store. We're just running it for you. What brands do you want? And we'll carry it. And we won't run out of stock. Right? It's a pretty simple formula in retail. Offer that experience. You know, the community happens in all cigar stores. But what I hear is when stores run out of product and they're not they're not listening to that the consumer but that's the advice i give just listen to your customer yeah and, and understand it's not your store you're just running it for them and then everything just seems to fall in place i love it um so if you could give one piece of advice to the pca what would it be i i, th I think the pca um listen i'm a small guy so i don't have a lot of influence here but i think you know, long term, I think the voice of some of the manufacturers needs, you know, whether that's getting them on a board or whatever it is, I, I think there needs to be a little bit of balance there. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's a 50-50 balance, but I think 
I think there needs to be at least a forum where manufacturers can have their say, uh, retailers can have their say. I think there needs to be a larger uh, voting platform amongst retailers. Um, the board does a fantastic job at the PCA, but try to, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in the collective thought, you know, and if, and if collectively we all put our minds together for the betterment of the industry, uh, that's always a good thing. And yeah. when you do that by, you know, the inclusion of as many people as you can, you know, yeah. not to a point where like men in black where, you know, <laughs> Will Smith says, you know, a, a, a person is smart, people are dumb. Yeah. You, know, you get too many people and <laughs> becomes kind of a dumb collective but, yeah yep uh, but you need the right people that uh have that growth mindset of the industry and i think um, you know the more of those kind of people you're going to have a, a, a some better results long term for the industry yeah absolutely so um every week we talk about uh, we do a segment called notable smokables where we just talk about fun and interesting stuff that we've smoked over the last week it could be something that's been on the market forever just something that was interesting to us obviously you you know from Crux, you smoke mostly Crux stuff, but you also get a chance to, you know, smoke some stuff from some other uh, from some other brands that that you find interesting and cigars that you love too. Is there anything recently that you've that you've uh, smoked from the humidor that that really kind of blew you away? I I, I think um, once again, I mean, I yeah, I do smoke a lot of Crux, but I'm all, a lot of it is just yeah, I, I want to make sure that what we're putting out is a consistent quality product. control. Yeah, um, and you tend to kind of like your own brand, right? Yeah. You know, um, however, there's there's a number of brands that I've, I've always enjoyed. I love stuff coming out of every factory, whether it's, I mean, I still love Padron. I love my father, uh, you know, in the in the Tatuaje line. I mean, uh, you know, this, you know, the stuff made out of Miami is still some of my favorite stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, there there's some, you know, Roma Craft is, I'm a big fan of Roma Craft. It's Temperance BA, I love it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and, and Skip was helpful to me, you know, when I was producing the Limitada cigar. I had a great wrapper. I had, a, a, you know, an average base blend. And, you know, he spent some time with me in the factory. And, and um, you know, he, he's, he's that type of guy. You yeah. know? And, and we sat down. He suggested a binder. He had some at his factory. And this is years ago. And yeah. so, um, you know, I, I, that's what I love about this industry is everybody's making something uniquely different. And, um, and it seems like everybody's either growing different varieties of tobacco, they're assembling different um, combinations of tobacco, they're processing maybe a little bit different. And so whether it's from, uh, yes, I'm a little more partial to uh, Nicaragua, um, but I'm trying to think if there's anything specific and new, um, you know, some of the HVC stuff I love, Ooh, yes. um, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, Nick Melo from Foundation. I mean, I love some of his stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, everybody's kind of doing a good thing. I think yeah. I, I think the, the, the manufacturers you're seeing in the humidors now consistently are the brands that are producing a great product. And how about you guys? I mean, what are you seeing out there that you love? Well, one of the things actually I revisited a cigar when I was when I was here on Friday night. Um, it's, it's a blend that I've loved for years, but I realized I hadn't smoked one in I don't know how long, at least a year, maybe two. I grabbed the Ashton VSG mm. and you've got that tubo size here in the, in the humidor, which is, it's not easy to find that, that tubo. It's, it's a little bit more rare. And man, I sat down here and I fired up that cigar and it's just, it's something about that, that, uh, you know, they say that aroma is one of the most powerful memory triggers. And I sat down and I fired up that cigar and it just brought me back a right. few years to mm. when, when I first discovered that blend. And that's one of the things I love about smoking stuff that's been on the shelf forever is if you haven't smoked it in a few years, you go back and you smoke it. And and if they're doing it right, then that memory is going to come back because you're going to realize, that OK, this tastes the same way it tasted five years ago. And such a great blend. Love that blend. To totally great. I mean, everybody's building great cigars. I mean, yeah. Um, I, and a lot of these companies that are on the shelf, I don't think their quality's is waiver. You, you know, bring up stuff made by Fuente Ashton. Um, you know, some of the Davidoff stuff is, is I think, the best it's ever been. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, every brand, I think, is is, is doing a good job. I mean, um, you know, I spent some time last month at, uh, S, you know, Scandinavian Tobacco Group uh, with the crew down there. I mean, they've got some old tobaccos in a vault and love to work with some of that stuff. But, you know, they have inventories of tobacco. A lot of factories have capacity. Uh, and, and, 
you know, so it's going to be fun to see where we go as a company mm-hmm. to try to create some of these new cigars and uh, unique uh, uh, cigar smoking experiences. But yeah, uh, I agree. Going back to some of the old basics. Yeah, yep. um, you got to. I remember when I started, where I started and some of the cigars that were my favorites, you know. And, yeah. Uh, for many years, it was Don Carlos. You know, oh, yeah. Don Carlos number threes yep. and the double Robustos. Uh, Ash and Cabinets. You can oh, bring yeah. up yep. Ash, number sixes and sevens. Mm-hmm. I mean. Um, you know, um, Ashton came out with the Symmetry, which, uh, in my opinion, one of the most unique cigars to come out in the last 10 years. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. taste like anything else. And, yeah. I, and I enjoy the experience. And so um, it's, it's a fun time in our industry. And I think yeah. um, it's going to continue to to, to be fun, um, you know, and, and Placencia, not because they're a manufacturing partner, but the stuff that uh, they've put out, you know, between the, you know, Alma Fuerte and the Fuego mm. and yeah. Alma de Campo. I mean, these are, I mean, these are aged tobaccos, and, yeah. And um, and I love them because I'm down, I'm there watching it. So you know, yeah. we get the best rollers, which are now rolling our cigars as well. I mean, it's really yeah. been fun to see them grow that brand. Oh, definitely. Uh, as a manufacturing partner, we need it. We we want we we want that brand to do well for them because yep. of the family, and the relationship we have with them. We need that brand to do well because it elevates anybody's uh, cigars with their their. You know, manufacturing for yeah, and so uh, yeah, great stuff in the market. Right yeah, now. yeah, and for me, uh, on Friday too, um, during the the herf, I uh, smoked my newest love, the Baca. Oh yeah, um, I had had one before, and um, you know it was okay, but then the one I had on Friday, so I don't know if they needed a little bit of time. You know, the one that I had, um, but and now this is my. Uh, fourth one yeah it's, it's a, a good blend it's a good blend it is a bad boy yeah, yeah. i want to try this is the the pygmy size i, I definitely want to try the 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 bigger size yep, when, I, when i'm able to but it's yeah it's a good blend yeah it is yeah, yeah. i love it yeah. cameroon cameroon <gasps> that cameroon I, I love cameroon that's why i love the don carlos i do i yeah. do too but if i compare so that don carlos cameroon one of my favorites or the uh the christoph cameroon uh, versus this, this has something special, you know, um, where you really get. Well, it's it's got that Nika Sueño vibe to it, you know. It's it it really you can you can tell that they're because you know they 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 really go for. Um, um, it's not that they go for power, but but you know you can tell that's one of their core values is cigars that have depth behind them, mm-hmm. and the it, the Baca has that along yeah. with the Cameroon flavor. Yep. So absolutely yeah that's a good one um so guys just for you watching and listening a few ideas about some stuff that we have coming up in the coming weeks uh next week we're going to talk to jonathan carney from uh, la flor dominicana cigars and the following week on the 17th we're going to talk to oliver niveau from united cigar which is brands like byron and atabay and then the following week on the 24th we're going to talk to uh, James Brown about Black Label Trading Company cigars and his music career and his music career, <laughs> and then uh, the following week uh, to close out the month of March, we're going to talk to Terrence Riley from Agonorsa Leaf. So that is what we have coming up. Keep uh, coming back and uh, you know following us on Facebook and YouTube and the Twitters and, and all the, the, all the Twitters, all the all the all the Twitters, all the Grams, the Grams and the, the books, the books and the ticks and the talks and mm-hmm. the. Yeah, whatever, whatever those things are. No idea are. what you're talking about. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> we went off the rails. Sounds interesting, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, to close this out, give give the listeners and viewers uh, sort of a final idea on where they can get more info about Crux Cigars. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, you know, go to cruxcigars.com. We got we have a new series of videos that uh, yeah uh, our, our marketing team has been putting out. Those You're going to see those kind of uh, you know filter through over the next uh, six months to uh, to a year. Uh, we've had that crew uh, Nick Rob with us for uh, you know probably three four times. A lot of content. We're we're really excited about some of the stuff that we're doing. Uh, Cruxcigars.com. Uh, follow us on social media. We've got some uh, some some fun things happening. And, do you have uh, a retail locator on the website? We do. Awesome. Yes. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. And if you guys are in an area, and you, you know your favorite favorite brick and mortar shop doesn't uh, doesn't have Crux cigars on the uh, on the shelf. Talk to the tobacconist and say, hey, this is a brand I want to try, so you need to get them on the shelf and have yep. them, you know. Uh, give me a call. Give Jeff a call. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, Jeff, thank you there. so much. Honestly, yeah, man. Thanks, My brother. pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. This was great. Thank you guys for watching and listening. 
Uh, if you have any questions, as always, hit us up on the website, howaboutthatcigar.com. And until we see you next time, burn cigars, not bridges. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thanks.